It's Talk Radio TV, and it's that time of the week. It's me, Mike Graham, and it's Plank of the Week. And here we are in the midst of rather an important time in history, but don't worry, because there's plenty of plankery to go around. And I'm delighted to say that we're joined today by Belinda De Lucy, a former Brexit Party MEP, and, of course, Kevin O'Sullivan, Talk Radio's very own uh, evening man, uh, an occasional filler-in for me when I go away, which doesn't happen very often. So, uh, we're in the midst of the Russian climax with... Um, Ukraine. I suppose we have to kick off with that, really, don't we? Yeah. So, unusually, I'm not going to ask you what your nominations are. I'm going to say my nomination is Vladimir Putin. Um, and that is not to say that well, what's he done? this isn't a very <laughs> serious situation. Uh, but it is to say that there's a lot of reasons why Vladimir Putin should be plank of the, of the week and probably why he should win it. Um, what have you noticed this week? Uh, well, this week, I think uh, Putin has been a little bit shocked about the West actually uniting. Mm. And uh, he's done something that so many of our enemies have failed to do over the past 10 years, be it ISIS or whoever. He's actually managed to regrow the West's spine and uh, unite us around a com common em enemy and uh, actually uh, inspire more countries like Finland, for example, mm. to want to join NATO. Right. So, so um, I'm not sure it's the sort of end result he was looking for, um, but uh, he, he's a plank on so many levels because he was the one that, that said he was expected to be welcomed with yes. flowers as right. he walked through the Ukraine. Now, mm. now clearly his intelligence services have had as much, you know, steroids as maybe he has <laughs> <laughs> by the looks of his puffy face. Yes. Um, uh, but uh, no, on, on a serious note, I think it has been a shock and I'm actually quite relieved we've managed to bear a mm. few teeth. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Even Switzerland's actually joined in this time as well. Indeed, uh, neutrality of Switzerland has been breached. Uh, mm. Putin, uh, the, in uh, the Ukraine, they call him uh, the Kremlin dwarf. Do they? Uh, he's <laughs> riddled with uh, COVID uh, phobia. Uh, and uh, they say that the reason he wants to annex Ukraine is he needs more territory for that massive table of his. <laughs> when the uh, president of Moldova turned up for talks with him, he assumed with Putin sitting at the end of that... I mean, it is literally about it's 20, about 20, yards, 20 yard, yards long. Yeah. Yeah. He assumed that he'd be sitting next to him and he walked towards Putin. No, 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 no. <laughs> and he had to go to yeah. the other end. I mean, I'm surprised they can even hear each well, other. Well, journalists have told me that if they have to get an audience with him, they have to go into isolation for something like two weeks oh. before he'll even see them in the same room. Yeah, and then you, ha you know. then they have to... Everyone who goes into the same room has to walk through a, an antiseptic chamber where they're sprayed. Right. He's absolutely coronaphobic. Uh, but I think that... The the, yes, he's been surprised by the strength of the West, uh, the unification. I think he's also there. been surprised by the strength of the uh, Ukrainian Ukraine, resistance. Indeed, yeah. indeed. but the trouble is, is that the more we hurt him, and we're definitely hurting him, the more the Ukrainians hurt him with their military resistance and their civilian resistance, the more he's likely to up the ante and start bombarding them with thermo weapons. Well, that's, weapons. that seems to be what is likely to be happening over the next few days, you know, that they are going to now target some other buildings. Because up until now, they, this is the bit I don't mm. quite get as well, that they they thought they could just kind of threaten to blow some things up and Ukraine would just lie down. I mean, yeah. don't they know the history of Ukraine? Which well, has, yes, never, has never been conquered, I don't think, has it? Well, it was in the Soviet Union. Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, it's never been conquered in any kind of actual... There's been a lot of battles there. Uh, there's Poland been, you know, certainly had a go at it. Yeah, I mean, lots of people have had a go. They, yeah, they're you tough know, people. They're yeah. very, very it's tough. It's definitely been a war people. zone for years. Mm. I mean, they, they've suffered so much. In the 1930s, they had that uh, horrific famine that Stalin put on mm. them. That killed up to about 4 million. The Second War killed up to about 7 million Ukrainians. Yeah. Their experience of the last 100 years has been very different from Western Europe. Mm. So they have grown gnarly and, yeah. and, 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 and full of kind of guts and also do or die. Um, and civilians yeah. making those Carl's Molotov, whatever those Molotov, beer, Molotov, Molotov cocktails. Yeah. cocktails Carlsberg cocktails. Carlsberg cocktails. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> That's the Danish version. But, yeah. but incredibly moving. Mm. Um, and it's what you do when, you, in the old days, where you felt your home was being uh, attacked, you took everything you could, a rake, a stick, and you just mm. went for it. Didn't matter. But isn't it interesting as well how we now talk about how he's walked in there because of the mm. way that we've become so woke and that, uh, you know, suddenly... The, MI, the head of MI5 is talking about, you know, celebrating LGBT. That's my... I know you're going to get onto that. Yeah. Um, and then you've got, you know, all the armies doing diversity yeah. training days. And funnily enough, this has also made people much less woke, hasn't it? Suddenly there's a wave of people who want to go and fight on behalf of the Ukrainians against the Russians. They're yeah. all heading out there. Zelensky made an, an offer. He said, if, if you want to fight, go to your, your nearest Ukrainian... Uh, um, 
what do you call it? Not ambassador, what is it called? Embassy. Embassy. And, yeah. and state your case and we'll, you know, get you over to the right. Ukraine type thing. And I think lots of people in England have already done, I think, uh, veterans, SAS mm. veterans yeah. gone There's over. There's about 150 of them Incredibly going, yeah. brave. Uh, yeah. Because also they don't really, I don't know whether they have weaponry training, the ordinary public mm. going over, um, but very brave. But that's how passionate people are about protecting yes. Ukraine. But, but we've all seen those pictures, haven't we, of some of the female um, MPs. Yeah. I mean, I can mm. see you doing this. Actually. I would totally. This I, one, if one, I didn't well, have to. And the old Kalashnikov. grannies with yeah. Kalashnikovs. Yeah. I've decided to pick up this and I'm going to yeah. fire it out the window if I see any Russians. Yeah. Absolutely. No. Um, but, uh, you know, that, you were talking about wokery, Mike. I mean, you're right, it's taken a hit, but not nearly enough. And uh, we should not uh, underestimate uh, how important the rise and rise and woke, uh, in wokery mm. uh, has affected Putin's thinking. He looks at the nonsense going on in the West, here in London, in all of Britain and in America, the absolute woke... Mm rubbish mm. uh, that our society is obsessed with, our obsession with climate change. Oh, I'm so worried about my grandchildren oh. in a generation's yes. time. Putin is living in the now world right. yeah. and we're living in some but also, kind of I think if you're living in, future. If you're yeah. living in Kharkiv, the second biggest city, where they're actually shelling uh, as mm. we speak, I mean, that's a proper emergency, yeah. not a climate exactly, emergency. Mike. Yeah, exactly, Mike. Did you hear what John right. Kerry exactly said? Right. John Kerry came out last week when uh, Russia invaded, saying, right? oh, yes, yes, OK, Putin, but whatever you're doing, remember about the climate change, don't forget about how things are melting in your area. And did this whole thing about, well, Putin, don't, you know, whether you're killing people or not, remember about the climate. Doesn't, it's it's cringe. Doesn't and look like anything's <laughs> melting over there. It looks absolutely <laughs> freezing. Right. Well, the only things that are melting are the things that they're firing very, very hot oh. yeah, rockets at. We've got to at. jettison all you this know. rubbish. We've yeah. got to be like well, Putin. This is the watershed. Understand what a proper emergency creepy, is. Do you know how creepy, creepy Putin is as well? Do you know what he calls the Ukraine? His pet name for the Ukraine no. is my beauty. Oh. Oh yes. Oh, that's like, not my good. Precious. Oh God. It is. It is a well, very. Well, I mean, he's a good example, isn't he, of somebody who has been in power for so long that he's kind of lost all sense of perspective. He yeah. doesn't have any very clue so, yeah. about what he's doing uh, as to whether or not it's the right thing or the wrong thing. Nobody's telling him one way or the other, whether he's gone mad or lost the plot. I mean, I don't go along with this the theory that he's sort of insane and therefore... No, he's not. No, he's it's very... Calculated. But he's very Russian. I mean, we all met Russians over the years um, in one way, shape or form. And they're very different people, you know. I'm not saying they're worse or better, but they're very different. Here's one thing you know? I don't understand. I have no idea why FIFA chucked... Uh, Russia out of the World Cup because all you got to do is let them play and they always get kicked out in the first round. Well, they do because they're rubbish. but also, so they but also Ukraine are better I mean, at football than Russia. The Why Ukrainians have always been, been have always been better at football. But that's the other thing, you know, throw them out of the World Cup. But where's the World Cup being held? In Qatar, yeah. and you go. What's, what's so that's all right then. Well, yeah. welcome, welcome to FIFA. Welcome yeah. to morality free zone. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, it is ridiculous. Well, but, people, but the woke pick and choose their causes. It's open season on some people, mm. and other people are ring fenced. Yeah. You had Gary Lineker coming out with that ridiculous. Well, tweet I may be coming up. Oh, with sorry, that coming up with that. Right. We've yeah, got. I see. There's a lot of synergy going yeah, yeah. on. There maybe, is. Yeah. We're maybe, sure. maybe, let's maybe not pre uh, yeah. anything. No, maybe we better do your first nomination. Yeah, my first nomination is Richard Moore, chief of MI6. Now, this is the guy who's supposed to be our Lord of the Spies, yes. the ultimate James I Bond, like Lord, you know, of, the Lord of the Spies. Very good. Uh, you know, in, in a time of, of national uh, crisis and, and, and international war and all these terrible, threatening things that we're being bombarded mm. with, he comes out with a tweet all about, well, this is a brilliant time to retweet about LGBT uh, History Month 2022. That was his tweet yeah. on Friday. As, as the Russian army were advancing, mm. as people were being killed in their house, our European neighbours. Yeah. And what makes me so angry about this tweet, because he obviously thinks it's ever so nice and kind, yeah. putting such an inclusion, hashtag diversity tweet out, is it is this navel-gazing, this self-indulgent uh, kind of virtue-signalling rubbish about very privileged Western ideologies, yes. gender ideologies. Mm. One of them, you know, in this country, everyone's rights are protected. Yeah. LGBTQ, women, black, white, all our yeah. uh, rights are equal under law, so there's no need for him to make the Ukrainian-Russian war about LGBT. No, of course not. But there's... one of the things he said as well in the tweet was that this is to prove that we, are, we have many things that are different about us and Putin. And it's like, well, there's loads of things you could have done. Yeah. It's like, you know, we don't also kill journalists who don't yeah. agree with what the government says. We don't imprison people who are political prisoners. Uh, we don't, you know, um, murder people on the streets of other capital cities. Unlike because, him, we're not dwarfs. Uh, we're also... Well, <laughs> I don't know if you can say that. 
But also, I mean, you know, you don't go around poisoning people in, in, in foreign yeah. lands, you know. I mean, you didn't have to come out with that particular it, one thing. But it's, it's almost as if you can make anything now about identity politics. And it's yeah. not about the children, women, young men dying in Ukraine anymore. No, it has to be about us. It's the me, 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 mm. me mentality that's infiltrated right. MI6. How can it be? Yeah, I know. Oh, God, it's I mean, bad that... enough in our army and our police. But MI6, I don't know. What about his predecessor, whose mm. wife oh. uh, put onto uh, Facebook pictures of the family party with the kids, her, the head of MI5, uh, all having spies. a happy party. And, and, and it was pointed out to the head of MI5 that this was perhaps not a great security <laughs> idea. <laughs> it's pathetic, isn't it? You had to, oh, no, no you had to no, tell her that. Putin and uh, Xi Jinping must look at us and just roar oh, yeah. with laughter But the West has had this basis. problem for a long time, and this is what I've been saying really all week since the Russians invaded Ukraine, mm. that, you know, we're not really able to cope with anything now. No. You know, NATO basically came, took two days to come out with a statement which basically said, please stop, Mr Putin. Yeah, don't be so mean. Please don't, please don't keep invading and then just go back home. You're not a nice man. Have a nice time and that'll be fine. They're certainly not going to be involved. You know, Biden came out and said that he was praying for them, right, which is not really what Ronald Reagan would have done. Ronald no. Reagan would have been straight in there with the F-16s, mm. you know, to say, I think you'll find that we're going to bomb the hell out of you if you don't move backwards. And then you've got this kind of crazy, ridiculous notion whereby, like in Afghanistan, one of the reasons apparently that um, al-Qaeda did so well as they did and how 9-11 was never thwarted was because they couldn't get any spies to stay in Pakistan because they didn't like the food, <laughs> right? And apparently they kept getting upset stomach. And it's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Are you joking? Okay. What, you can't actually have a spy living in a foreign country because they don't like the food? Um, that... Pakistan has just agreed to buy £2 billion worth of gas and wheat <coughs> from the Russians yes. as of today. Well, that'll be and... that other virtue signalling bloke, Mr Imran Khan. Imran Khan! And they, Pakistan Former is cricketer. our largest recipient of our of our foreign yeah. aid. I'm just like, what are we doing? I know. Stop Damn good cricketer this well. ridiculous. He was a much Very better cricketer good. than he is a yeah. prime minister. He, yeah. Or prime president, him. whatever he is. But yeah, I mean, he should have stayed playing cricket. And he was much better as a playboy <laughs> than he is as a sort of Islamist as well. Totally. But He's more than fool up us for, for giving millions and millions of taxpayers' yeah. money to a country now siding with Russia and mm. making it very clear you know, where, where they stand on the yeah. issue. But then you've got America still buying 75,000 barrels of oil well, from Russia well, a I day. Mean, Europe is still giving Russia something like a billion pounds yeah. a day. We're funding it's all the very well saying. It's all very well saying, oh, we must kick out all these oligarchs, but oh, we, here's we another billion quid. We need to have a little quid. bit of a look at ourselves. The, the, the financial yeah. sanctions are pretty stringent, better than I thought they would be, mm. but uh, underpinning them is this uh, innate absurdity that while we all go, right, we're cutting you right off, uh, we are, we are still buying 3% of yeah. our gas from... Uh, Russia and of course Germany's still buying nearly all of its gas yeah. from yeah. Russia. So and the, that was why they were dragging the, their heels, another, weren't they? Another legacy of the fantastic, towering politician Angela Merkel, Merkel. Yes. Oh. who gave them an en the energy policy from hell. She gave Russia the key Let to Ukraine. Let every migrant she on did. earth in there. Yeah. Well, she ruined Europe basically. Completely useless. Yeah. Completely useless. The most overrated person and in she remember, history. And she remember at the time when COVID first started, yeah. and, and that she was still in the sort of good books of the. Owners who yeah. always say, Oh, but the thing is, she's a scientist, and so you know, she's very clever. You're not like any of our leaders, you know. I mean, Theresa May was also a scientist, she yeah. was also a useless prime minister useless. as well. But you know, and when Covid started, oh, that's why Germany's doing so well because they're led by a scientist. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah. Well, as for last time I checked, Germany was in a worse place than Britain. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, they were led by Germany while she was in charge a commie, an East German yes. commie who actually instinctively looked Hopped east, down. not west. Yeah. She spoke fluent Russian speaker, mm. identified far more with Putin than anyone uh, and in there, the West. There yeah. must have been a moment where Merkel Doesn't had like the thought culture. of, if I do this, I'm putting Ukraine at risk, but you know what? It's worth it. Look at the way she, she must have had that mm, thought, and yeah. that, that hasn't been really... Well, that was the beginning of it all, wasn't it? Yeah. When she offered the, the hand of friendship to Ukraine and said, why don't you come and join us? We'll give you a load of money. Mm. Yeah. Right? Unbelievable. Mm. Anyway, who's your first one, Kevin? Uh, well, uh, the world is on the brink of war. Uh, the emergency and the well, crisis you keep saying it is in Ukraine. Uh, well, I think you find it is. Uh, <laughs> I don't it, think you find it isn't actually. The world is not on the brink no, of war. We I are not going to have a world war. I bet we do. I bet we do. I bet, I bet we, we do. do. I mean, this is the kind of thing he says, yeah. right? He's got he'll, he'll have to retract it. Yeah. Well, and if you're right, then we'll all be dead anyway. So I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> I'd rather be optimistic. I mean, did I, I see, I... by the way? Did I see the other day that Sadiq Khan made some comment about how London was prepared for a nuclear attack? If case it comes. 
Well, no, it's not because you can't get. Well, you can't get round. Judging by how late you guys were to get in here, good luck escaping to the bunker. If you're dropping a nuclear bomb, you can forget about running. Yeah, can't get anywhere. Well, running's about the only way you could get anywhere. Anyway, we are on the brink of World War Three, and this is what Gary Lineker tweeted. I know these are scary <laughs> times for other reasons, but for crying out loud, we need to act now on climate change yes. to avoid catastrophe. <laughs> I mean... What planet is he on? Well, he's obviously it not on our planet. It is just astonishing. Uh, this comes it's about on... time he took offered to take some Ukrainian refugees in, isn't it? Yeah. But this, well, I think I think he has offered. <laughs> no, I think that was in Afghanistan. Or well, we never no, found no, out. No, who it was, was a Syrian. The it was a Syrian okay. who wrote him a lovely letter. Uh, we never English. saw the right. refugee. No, <laughs> we saw the letter. It was a very nice. It was nicely written as well, wasn't it? Very, yes, yeah. very well, very He's good English. English. In a fluid uh, way. I thought you hand. would have been more conservative than you were. Really. <laughs> Stupid. Oh, that's extraordinary. That's a, well. that's a, that's a, so, a, he's a fool. Yeah. So, yeah, um, uh, this comes on the back of a UN a climate change report right. uh, warning us yet again. It's good to see we, they're still relevant. If we, don't, <laughs> if we don't move now, you know, the world is finished. And this is exactly what we're talking about. This is uh, the... It was the, the uh, but don't miss this, by the way. It's a damn good read. Uh, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Yeah. Uh, These are the ones uh, that keep getting it, it wrong. It's demanding immediate action or we will all yeah. die. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and what we're going to tell this lot, what we're going to tell Gary Lineker, we're sick of your cliches, mm. we're sick of your groupthink nonsense, and we are jettisoning this climate change obsession mm. because there are far more important immediate emergencies to worry about. You cannot have an emergency that's going to happen in 10 years. No. Don't phone up the fire brigade and say, could you come run in a decade? No. You know, it's ridiculous. Well, if you wait for an ambulance, that's about the waiting yeah, time. Yeah, that's true. Oh, how much so little want... we can do anyway? England, uh, UK is what? How, how much percentage do we get? Two carbon percent. gas is 2%. Two 2%. Percent. Two percent. Well, we didn't... the International Panel on Climate Change, by the way, the same people that in 1989 said that by 2001, Canary Wharf would effectively be underwater. It's not. Is it? No. Yeah. And it's no. now 2022. I know. They love their fear. They want they Armageddon. It. They've got nothing right, ever. Greta Thunberg has got a lot to answer for. because she's made us take. Recently. Yeah, she's been very quiet. She's gone whole... very quiet. Yeah. She's 62 now. She's getting <laughs> on a bit. You know. She's on those same pills but, as yeah. uh, Putin. On this, on this climate change yeah. nonsense, though, uh, you, you know, we, we have a, a, a way to uh, fuel this country oh. for a long, long time called fracking. Yes. Uh, and not only do we refuse to do it because a bunch of crusties, middle-class crusties, say... It will cause an earthquake in Blackpool. No, it won't. Don't be Well, ridiculous. I mean, to be honest, there are some people who think that might be an improvement to Blackpool. Yeah, I know. People always say that, but I'm, I'm not I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be one of those. I'd like to disassociate myself, uh, but it will I not. used to go there for student union conferences. I thought you were about to say you were going, going there, took your dates there. But no, oh. no, I could never afford it. ice cream. It. <laughs> well, Torquay know, was my place of I've been, I've been in a 7.1 earthquake. That's an earthquake. Oh. But that was the proper uh, one in yeah, California. Yeah, we need one. to get back to fracking. Now, not only are we not doing yeah. this. Not only have we announced uh, that we will never frack again, even though it will give us a hundred years worth of cheap energy. Yes. Uh, the uh, order now by the government uh, is to go up to these major fracking centres, uh, Quadrilla, it's called, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and to fill them in with concrete. Yeah, I know. I heard that. It, it mad, is isn't it? insane. Yeah, it is. It is. It's banal asinine and insane. Yeah. At the very least, leave the wells open yeah. because the wells are what cost the big money. Mm. So at least you've got the potential to yeah. go back yeah. there. Don't go and fill But this is in. the problem. I mean, Peter Hitchens talks about this a lot, that when they fill in a, you know, when they close a coal mine down, they fill all of the shafts in with concrete. They don't just, they blow everything up. Is that because of elf and safety? Probably. Mm. Or just because... No, no, it's, no, it's, so it's, it's, the it's green a rejection. Brigade, so the Green Brigade yeah, can yeah, say, we'll yeah, never yeah, use that yeah, again. Yeah, exactly. We'll no, never no more fossil fuel. If Russia really, you know, cuts off yeah. gas and all the... This is exactly the moment we need to be keeping our options well, open. Well, Germany, uh, bless them, are actually now talking about reopening some coal mines and reopening some nuclear plants yeah. that they yeah. shut yeah. because they know they need the energy. Well, we've got three coal mines uh, left. How many, uh, how many coal-fueled power stations are there in China? 1,082. Yeah. They're, They're building right. 300 new yeah. ones. By the time this show's finished, they've built another five. Exactly. exactly. They are looking at us and our energy policies like, yeah. and Germany's energy policies, Europe's energy policies, and laughing mm. their socks off. They are. I, I suggest we all chain ourselves to all the fracking uh, parts that they're 
filling in yes. and not move and do a whole anti... be the swampy. Yeah, anti we'll be anti-swampy. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll go we'll with our... We'll have a bath every day. We'll have a bath every day. <laughs> Every morning we'll before we start. There. We'll be like uh, people's vote lot with our little champagne That's and our it. picnics. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> but what they do, Germany... Uh, the you know we've got to do a lot of other stuff oh, yeah. here, don't you? China and Russia... Oh, my uh, they, they I mean, I wish the end of the world would come soon, actually. <laughs> they, they, China and Russia concentrate on today and we concentrate on the next generation. We've got to stop worrying about the next generation and yeah. get involved and in the yeah. world today. Leave, yeah, all the worrying, leave all the worrying to Gary Lineker, who yeah. is the, uh, the, yeah, yeah. Fight, the final nomination. Yeah. No, for crying By the out way, loud. he also drives a Mercedes C63, which is one of the fastest and most you know, fuel-burning, polluting, polluting cars in the entire yeah. world. Yeah. People have sent me pictures of that, so thank you for that. <laughs> uh, so Gary Lineker's there, that nomination, Vladimir Putin, of course, and Richard Moore. Uh, we'll find out more after this break. Welcome back to Plank of the Week with me, Mike Graham, and my two guests, Kevin O'Sullivan and Belinda DeLucy. Belinda, give us your second nomination. My second nomination, and I've been wanting to do him forever, is James Corden. Yes. Yes, finally, finally. The man since, everybody loves to the hate. The man everybody, yeah, since his 2016 sort of anti-Brexit bile vomit that he did on his show, mm. um, saying, oh, but if we came, looked down from space and saw the world, it, we should all unite and no borders, bring all the borders oh, down. Right, yeah. Hit that spiel. I was like, he needs to get planned. And he's getting planked this week Good. because he came out uh, uh, over the last few days with his Late Late Show, with his monologue. Right. Um, and he, a uh, mon monologue obviously about the Russians invading Ukraine. And he brought in his children into the monologue. Um, and this is a problem we're seeing a lot with a sort of loveys. Holly yeah. Willabooby, Willabee. Oh, yeah. well, she did it as well. Holly Willabee. Yes, it's all about, well, how are we going to explain this to our children? And, you know, we need to, like... How about you just tell them? I can't process this. And how? what about our children? What about whose children? The West's children, children of millionaires tucked yeah. up in their little comfortable houses. Why on earth should they be spending... How am I going to explain? Minute? How am I going to explain to my children how James Corden... Who it's quite funny. He went to America, became a complete oh, wally. Oh, and it's, you know? it's so vanilla now. And the last thing I'm going to tell my children is to think about themselves and their feelings yes. when other children and women are getting murdered and their houses mm. destroyed in another country. I'll I mean, tell we my used to laugh, didn't like, we, Kevin, at this, this thing where, where, where everywhere you would go with somebody, and how does that make you feel? Yeah. But that's now where we are. Yeah, it's, all about, it's all about the how does it make you feel? Spoiled Western feelings. How do, you, how do you feel about the war? Forget about the Ukrainians. What about me yeah. and how I feel about it? And what I hate is that we're bringing up a generation of risk-averse, mm. fragile, terrified little children who are being told now the world is ending because of a war. And by the way, it's all about your feelings, not about the actual victims. And he's just peddling this, as well as the Huffington Post did it. Yes. They did a blog about how we need to, the West needs to meditate to get through this crisis, <laughs> to help them through the stress Good of luck other with people that. dying. In Freedom Square, which is just blown up. Get the fucking gun in your hand and go over and fight. It's, it's not yeah. the war in Ukraine that worries me, it's the mental health effect on the people in the West. Yes. It's, yeah. a, it's a very worrying I'm very, situation. I get very nervous watching the news. Well, don't watch it then. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I, I mean, get triggered when I hear the word war. Well, these yeah. people, these children, they're, they're going to they're gonna be making our policy yeah. and being our, our defence. Well, do you know, I came up with this theory just the other week because the fact that we are so much in that bad space is yeah. because all these kids have been through the education system now which has been wrong yeah. and hopeless for a very long time. And so they've all now started to run things. <laughs> and we've all, you know, so Richard Moore and the, 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 his yeah. ilk, who are all going it's on about... It's only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse because they're all just what they're being taught Yeah, in everything school. is frightening. It's all about our feelings, not the actual victims. It's all about you taking on the victimhood of others. Yeah. So I, I, I cannot understand that. My when, do you remember when we were young and we had the wars going on? We weren't taught about that it's about our feelings no. and how we're going to cope. It was all about, right, let's send packages... Well, I... I seem to remember the IRA kept trying to blow me up on the way to school, you know, every day, and I was getting on the tube, but it didn't yeah. trigger me particularly. It just no. made me look out for packages, and, <laughs> you know, just in case bins. somebody had left I an know. unattended package and I had to go <laughs> and tell someone, and you know. Life. Yeah, you, you have to be honest. Children are very privileged. Lucky you. Now, let's yeah. think of others. Instead, they're turning this into a us problem. Yeah, they, they would be absolutely traumatised by the London that you and I grew up yeah. in. I mean, we used to be IRA bombing every three yeah. days. Right. I went to the Ebury Street bombing when I was uh, a journalist at yeah. Fleet Street, and I was sent there, like, really early, because I lived quite mm. near there. And I got there before the cops. Yeah. And uh, you don't want to see that kind no. of thing. It was disgusting. No, I yeah. bet. Uh, but but they, these were happening, like, once a week. Yeah. And you can imagine the snowflakes now. They'd be going, oh, 
Oh, and, what and was that he... loud noise? That was a bomb. Okay. What? My yeah. mental health. <laughs> I've got PTSD. And the teenagers in Ukraine are learning how to protect yeah, their families, yeah. defend themselves. The U teenagers here are learning how to pronounce pronouns yeah, without yeah. hurting people's feelings on TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. Like, What's what are we pronoun? training our children? We need it's more. It's dreadful. I know, but I mean, the, these people aren't helping. James Corden's show goes out to 135 mm. countries around the world. Right. He shouldn't have brought his children into it. Whether they like it or not. No one should be talking about, you know, very privileged children and their feelings at the moment. We should be focused on helping the Ukrainians. It really is a problem that people just don't have enough to worry about. Who's your second one, Kevin? Uh, well, again, uh, let's uh, talk about wokery. Mm. Uh, I mean, it is a serious issue. It's a pernicious scourge that is kind of decaying our society. Yeah. We're getting soppier We're rot and rotting from the inside every day. Out. Yeah. And I just think the government keeps declaring war on it and saying, oh, we're going to tackle this uh, issue. And they never do anything about it. And in fact, in any given issue, mm. they come out on right. the woke side as yeah. well. Well, any time any government declares war on anything, it yeah. always gets worse. Yeah. Yeah. Boris it? has no appetite for the culture no. wars. So really I was thinking in this, uh, universities are obviously the fulcrum mm. of this mad wokery. Uh, I was thinking of uh, offering uh, Plank of the Week uh, to a highly acclaimed, I must say, the Highlands University in oh. Scotland, oh, yeah. uh, where they have put a trigger warning on for snowflake students who might be traumatised by this, on uh, Hemingway's classic novel, The Old Man and the Sea, uh, because it contains, <laughs> and I quote, graphic scenes of fishing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is, is about the sea. But, 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 I thought you were going to say it's because they called somebody the old man. Did you presume his gender? I did. <laughs> old man is a pejorative term. Yeah. Uh, but uh, The old gender neutral human <laughs> and yeah, yeah. the human water. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and everyone see. Yeah, uh, no, but uh, despite a sterling effort by the Highlands University, that isn't bad. It, it's Birmingham's that is Newman bad. University. Oh yeah, that uh, takes the biscuit. I haven't heard week. of either of these places. Uh, by the way. Well, of course not. That's <laughs> <laughs> all these universities. In you just own the university and make university. a load of money. How Chester much is that? University. Nine thousand pounds. They're not exactly the dreaming spies, <laughs> no. are they? You know, if you went there, there's some crummy, crummy little red brick building yeah, yeah. with a few windows in it. <laughs> anyway, uh, New Birmingham uh, in Birmingham, Newman University has put a trigger warning uh, on the Bible <laughs> uh, because it contains <laughs> themes of sexual violence and abuse. <laughs> I mean, come on. Blimey. I mean, I'm sorry, but what about the Quran? Yeah. What, what about? The, I mean, there are plenty of other religions. Well, they, well, they won't do else. that. They won't do that. No, the Bible's fair game, of no. course. You sorry, can do the Bible. Open don't, season you can't, on Christians. Yeah, you yeah, can't do it. You're going to get a fatwa. I'm going to get fatwa. You know, I suppose in a free country, you can't <laughs> pass laws against this sort of thing. No. But it would be good if we could. Yeah. yeah. Somehow or other, we have to stop this nonsense because it is eating away at our society. And as I said earlier, people like Putin and Xi Jinping are looking at us and laughing their socks off, yeah. saying the weak, woke West is finished. Yeah. So if we got rid of some of this nonsense, uh, it would be a very good first step to uh, redeeming ourselves. Oh, absolutely. I think that's right. Well, on the same theme, funnily enough, I'm going to go with universities. I was going to look at the old striking... Uh, tube workers, but yeah. I thought that's a little bit sort of London-centric. London -centric, yeah. um, yeah. But it is the RMT who are saying their pensions are just simply not good enough. I mean, you know, the, the fact, despite the fact that they've got a final salary pension, which most people don't have, and that they've been paid massive How amounts of money. How much are they on now? Well, I think the starting salary for a tube driver is about 56000 <laughs> Yeah, they got 65. To press, to press and, the and red and green stuff. They go like this. They go like this. Apparently it's very stressful. Is it now? Yes. Sitting down. Yeah, Apparently, you know, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm not saying it mustn't be traumatic, but if they... Um, run someone over. You know, like, people are always mm. chucking yeah. themselves on, on the But track. when you say always, it's not that well, It happens quite <laughs> a lot. Trust me, I use the tube <laughs> all the time. I mean, I must admit, I don't have charitable feelings towards the poor suicide no. victims. No. I always say, could you... Well, you, you don't really have any charitable feelings at all, do you? Uh, no, I don't. No. Anyway, uh, if they if that, that happens to them, and it must be terrible, you know, something yeah, when yeah. you hit it, they get a year off. <gasps> really? To recover. Yeah. But also, a year off. the last dispute they had was because like they you were could being do a deal asked, with it. Yeah. They were being asked to work, I think, four yeah. nights a year, yeah. and they didn't. They weren't happy with that. Yeah. But anyway, so I'm not I'm going to leave the RMT yeah. alone because I found some even worse unionised workers. Oh, yeah, and these on. are the Union of University Lecturers, okay, which is called the UCU. Do you know that they've actually been on strike for most of February, and what? they're on strike on this grounds? week um, because apparently, according to their union, I need to get this right. Um, lecturers were walking out because their pay is apparently beyond disgraceful. Uh, their pensions are terrible. The conditions are apparently awful. Now, Good. correct me if I'm wrong, 
<laughs> Most lecturers haven't actually been in lectures for two years, have they? Yeah, they've been because sat on their sofa with a nice Chardonnay. Doing it on <laughs> Zoom. And here's when the one they've learned from the NHS workers, oh, right? God, yeah. Apparently staff are at, quotes, breaking point. Oh, my god. I mean, gosh. you teach in a university where you don't even have to go in every day because most of the lectures take place sort of part-time, it seems to me. I mean, I've got one of my kids is in like a sixth form college. He only goes in two days a week yeah. and that's full-time education. It's a cushy job. It really is cushy. So apparently more than a million students, now I don't know if you've got kids at university, but not a quite. million students have basically had no lectures to go to and they may not have even told their parents this because the parents are paying through the nose. You're told you have to pay £9,000 a year for the privilege of being educated. And these people are not even bothering yeah. to turn up. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, because it's they incredible. don't have to, that's why. They don't have to, they're they're concentrating on letting their students yeah. down. It's a full time occupation. 68 universities were involved in the second week of strikes uh, starting on the 21st of February, which I think was last week, yeah. right? Um, the third week of action will take them into March. And there's going to be a March the 2nd walkout organised in conjunction with the National Union of Students. So they're all going on strike together. And what exactly so are they the walking out of? So their, their own the rooms. students are supporting well, their they're walking out of their bedrooms. They're exactly their into bedrooms. Into the kitchen. I'm not going to, I'm work, not in going to work in my bedroom with my anymore. Latte. No, and I'm not going to teach anybody from my <laughs> living room anymore because I'm on strike because the conditions are awful. <laughs> well, maybe you should move house if yeah. the conditions are that bad. Clean your room, you Clean dirt your bag. room. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> We've been on strike for two weeks, have you? Really? <laughs> well, exactly. I've noticed. It's like the border force going on strike. It's like, sorry, you They've been on strike for 20 years. It's, it's actually harder to get in if the border strike if border <laughs> force are not working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. It's like it carry is. on strike as yeah. much as yeah. you like, guys. There's nobody to protest. <laughs> the <laughs> <laughs> you have to go back. They're all on Calais Beach. Don't come across yeah. today. <laughs> <laughs> the border speech are on strike. Yeah, know. let's let's do a pro I mean, strike march. Just for the ridiculous. Force. Anyway, so I thought strikes were a thing of the past. I didn't think anybody went on strike anymore, but apparently there's more people striking than ever before. Yeah. Well, I think lockdown has made a lot of people very lethargic and not very interested in getting out of their pajamas. Yes. And so I think they're probably striking. It's the, the more I mean, lockdown, I hadn't even really. heard of this lot. The university and college union. It's called. It probably made it up over a point. There's thousands of, the of them. There's thousands of them. It's oh, unbelievable. God. Ten yeah. days of strikes. I mean, I'm sorry. This is not the time to be no. going on strike, guys. So uh, we're going to take another short break and we'll be back with more plankery after this. <laughs> Welcome back to another edition of Plank of the Week with Belinda DeLucy, myself, Mike Graham and Kevin O'Sullivan. Uh, we've reached uh, the third part of the show in which uh, you nominate your third um, plank. Yes. So please, let's have your third plank. My third plank is Anna Sourpuss Subri. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she's salty. Well, she was salty last night, she that's for sure. She certainly was, yeah. Uh, yes. Um, listen, again, who is she? The woman shall I who give her got Brexit done. She is the woman <laughs> that famously said, I shall respect the referendum result, and then tirelessly worked to, uh, to rerun it, it, to, yeah, exactly, overturn it. Was she it. one of those ones that joined so, that party that everyone... Yeah, she was. Yeah, the, the yeah. Also, they, and they had to oh, rename it. Change UK. Change UK, but then they had to change it. the name of it again, didn't they? I think they did, yeah. yeah. to the organisation of change. That's right. She kept getting the name wrong in Parliament. So blessed. OK, so and I wrote well, out the... this before or after lunch with her. That is it? true. <laughs> so she sent this tweet um, and I just think this is so reflective of a lot of the how the Lib left are kind of seeing the Russian situation at the moment. She tweeted uh, to journalists in Poland and Estonia. No, she didn't really. She was very sober. Boris Johnson is visiting <laughs> you tomorrow. I know it's difficult to believe, but the scruffy clown really is RPM. And you need to know something very important about him. He tells lies. So she tweets this That's out nice. at a very, very important moment in our nation's history as well. Our prime minister goes over to Poland to connect with the people in a time of war where we're on the cusp of possibly mm. a, a major development anytime soon. And she undermines him to foreign journalists. Now, whatever you think of Boris Johnson, whether you think he's a clown, a liar or mm. whatever, yeah. at a moment like this, we need to get behind him. But by telling journalists, he lies, by the way, he's a clown, by right. the way. Number one, what is she doing telling journalists yes. what to do? Uh, number two, she, she feels like uh, it's this whole, I cannot see Britain doing well. She doesn't want to see Britain doing well. A lot of the hardcore Romaniacs mm. would rather anything 
anything than the UK do anything good ever. Right. They almost salivate any moment the, the UK messes up. Yeah. The, the Financial Times guy, Lionel Barber, yeah. came out salivating over Liz Truss being uh, abused by her Russian counterpart. Yeah. Um, it's almost like they, they can't wait, they can't for, wait. for any kind of attack on us. there is a kind of deranged us. hatred that it they have. It is a deranged hatred. They want us to got Brexit fail. actually done. It's and weird, the, and, isn't it? And, the, and this uh, automatic uh, assumption that anybody who doesn't uh, reflect their political views is thick. Yes. Yeah. And unintelligent, yes. undereducated. Doesn't follow the science. Yeah, yeah I, just ridiculous. But it really it's also ridiculous such, a, such an insult to the victims, as if that is going to help the people of Ukraine, right. all this internal yeah. bitching, yeah. Right. Um, still bringing up the Brexit thing, still doing our country down. Uh, you see it a lot on Twitter and social media. They, they hate the idea of the UK were the first to connect and send weapons over mm. to uh, the Ukraine, uh, and it's only second to America yeah. with the amount of weaponry we sent right. to UK. And it's because of Boris that the Germans, I think, in the end, surrendered to the idea of the Russians being ejected from SWIFT. Yes, yes. He did all that first, yeah. but they cannot swallow it. No. And so, yeah, she and gets it. And it also it feeds into that week. narrative that the Russians came out with. Do you remember if you saw, I don't know if you saw that um, uh, Dominic Waghorn thing where he was with, with Sky asking questions of the, I think it was the foreign ministry mm. spokeswoman, who basically launched into an attack on him because he said, oh, you know, um, I think it was Dominic Raab or somebody had called Putin mad, deranged, and she said, well, if you want to talk about somebody's personal life, maybe you should look at your own prime minister. That's right. Right? And sort of piled in on, on that front mm. because then people like Subri more or less get quoted by the yeah. Kremlin. You know? That's true. Subri came out as well today saying, oh, Dominic Ra uh, Raab is a spineless tosser, she puts on Twitter. Oh, that's nice. I'm thinking, isn't this all the hashtag be nice and kind to everyone people's vote mm. lot? She, yeah. she she is so reflective of how self-loathing the And according to her new um, sort of of our way of life, she's now calls herself a criminal barrister. Oh. I don't know how much work she's getting. Uh, and also, she's one of the founders of Doctors in Distress, apparently. These are all doctors who apparently find it quite amazingly surprising that they're dealing with people's lives, and uh, sometimes it's a bit upsetting. No, no, oh. it's doctors you know. who meet Anna Subri and they're immediately <laughs> in distress. <laughs> yeah, they need uh, counselling uh, straight away. She's all, don't forget, she was also a reporter for uh, Good Morning Britain. Was she? Yeah. I didn't know What, that. years ago? Was, yeah. Was she? It was at GMTV, one of those ITV. Yeah, yeah. yeah she was an uh, on-screen... Oh. Uh, I well, can't she's... imagine it could be worse it's, it's... then than it is now. But she's like, she's I mean, like the really rest of them. Now. She's 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 consumed with bitterness that yeah. she didn't get her own way. Yeah, and they still can't. Uh, believe mm. that uh, Brexit happened, and the fact that they're still all obsessing with it, uh, they ought to see get some help. Mm. Yeah, I think I it's very it, it, it really I mean, You've worked in politics yeah. as a woman, and it's amazing how many both men and women are from on that side of the argument. Just can't seem to accept that they lost. Uh, they, yeah. And they're Surely in total for a denial. You but lose but every day. Yeah. But it's but it's but this hatred. It, they're yeah. full of hate. It's, like this, you know, it's, it's like. But I went to public school and I yes. went to Oxford. And I'm entitled and, to and have I, my way. I, and I live in Islington. Yes. <laughs> How come I didn't get my way? Yeah, yeah they you will know, they not are, let it they, lie. They cannot accept it to this day. And oh, it's no. such a shame at a time where we could have all pulled together, forgotten about Brexit divisions, forgotten about COVID divisions, mm. and just gone, actually, now's the time to focus on Ukraine. The typical, usual faces of the Lib Left come out sniping from the sidelines, trying to do our country down. Oh, but the UK aren't I I admitting all these refugees straight away from Ukraine. No, we're taking taking our time. Mm. A, we're not the nearest Isn't that country. that typical? Well, so, we, you know, Poland and all the nearer countries are the ones that need us to help them rather than us. By the way, the numbers are yeah. creeping up. Yesterday it was 100,000. Today Boris conceded it might be 200,000. What's that? Well, the uh, number Ukrainian of refugees, refugees yeah. heading well, to the UK. Well, they're saying it could go up to 7 million at some point. Well, no, but that's it to the UK. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, God knows how they're counting them because they don't seem to be able there's to count There's 1.5 million. There's 500,000 in Poland think, already. Well, they, you know, they, they, it's now Home Office policy, is it not, not to tell us how many people are arriving on the south. Uh, they haven't brought that in yet, I don't think. Well, well no, yeah, but they're just not going to tell you. You can't yeah. tell you. And you don't now, need papers. Shortly before I come to you for your last nomination, I've got to just pass on Harry and Meghan, I'm afraid, have got to be <laughs> co-opted as the carryover <laughs> pair. <laughs> because They're award winners. Well, this year, right, uh, this week, rather, um, they're in it for two reasons. One, because they issued that ludicrous statement about how we stand with Ukraine. What does that mean? What does it they even stand? mean? Does it mean she wears blue and yellow? It's what like it all mean? these people on Twitter who put yeah. the Ukrainian flag. In fact, Anna Subri's one of them. Yeah, She's got yes. a Ukrainian flag behind her. Yeah. And you just think, yeah, all right, so what? What does that mean? Well, it's I mean, also the colours of the EU flag. You're a good, blending you're a good person, <laughs> you know, because you have the Ukrainian flag. And so, first of all, they yeah. said that. Then they got really, really annoyed because it turns out that uh, William and Kate... Uh, actually put out an even better statement yes. saying that they'd met the president of Ukraine and his wife.
Yes. And so they were sending their best wishes to them and to the entire country. So they completely got trumped by, uh, <laughs> by William and Kate. Then they awarded themselves an award at the NAACP Awards in America, National Association for the Advancement of Coloured People, which I didn't think you could call them anymore. It's but, you know, it sounds say, a bit like not... that. But anyway, so apparently, I don't know if this is absolutely nutty the way it happened, but apparently it was some kind of PR exercise um, where they basically were awarded a, an, a, um, um, an award in some way, if they by, turned up by their own exactly. people, by their if own sort of people, up, yeah, yeah, by their, yeah. they're so humble. Oh yeah, and I mean they managed to break away from that private life of theirs <laughs> to get onto the red carpet oh. to stand there and just you know accept the award. We're so humble. And uh, did you see Zelensky I mean, oh. came out with a statement thanking William and Kate yes. and missed them out completely? Yes. Didn't even acknowledge and thanks them. Thanks the royal family. I mean that is a dark day for Harry and Meghan. It's a terrible so, day. You know, well, they haven't been prayers. out since then. They haven't been out. No. They, they wear black now. No, they can't. They can't handle the fact that. Can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with me? What's wrong? But, but I wore blue and yellow and I said hashtag Ukraine. And she did wear blue and yellow at the, at the award ceremony, that's right. Marvelous. So your final one, Kevin. Uh, well, I'm going to do a self-indulgent one and uh, having just spent uh, two and a half hours driving about five miles through jam-packed <laughs> London. Welcome to my world. Uh, because the I do tube it every driver, day. Because the tube drivers are on strike. <laughs> Uh, and uh, there was also an accident in, in Holborn. I'm going to uh, nominate our old favourite Sadiq Khan, oh, yes. the mayor, yeah. who's sitting around saying we're say we're okay if there's a nuclear war <laughs> in London. No, we're How? not. No, How we're not. Are we okay? No, we're, we're stuck. We can't move. <laughs> we'll all die. Sitting Where are we going to go? Yeah. Uh, and uh, secondly, uh, you know, because it's his fault the tube drivers are on strike. Yeah. Because. Transport for London, the absolute hasn't got shambles any money. that he runs, hasn't got any money and is about to go out of business. It goes bankrupt about uh, once a week. Uh, yeah. If you look at the traffic today, Belinda was stuck in it for two hours yeah. as well, getting even <laughs> a a shorter journey. And a lovely cabbie, though. Yeah, lovely yeah. Black yeah. So, so, so he says that this is the world's greatest climate change friendly city. Well, the amount of fumes going up into the air today. Well, I don't know how he gets that. I don't know where just he gets that from. astonishing. <laughs> and why does he spend all his time, I know this is old territory, uh, announcing? That uh, uh, London is at the forefront of the it's not. of the fight against climate change. I don't give a damn whether <laughs> London's at the forefront of the fight. No, but it isn't. Though. I want a decent yeah. tra transport system. I want system. to get to work. You know, I want the, I want the traffic to move. I want it to be less mad. I want it to be a more functional city, like it was before that little idiot took yeah. over. No, also, no. if you're having to come here to do business and there's a tube strike, you're not going to come, are you? No. So. The city's losing out. And there's another Money one on is Thursday, not coming isn't in. There's yeah, another there one. It was just <laughs> astonishing today, though, wasn't it? Absolute grid... The entire city, absolute gridlock. And yet Londoners keep voting him in. I mean, it is a, a they democratic... They vote for it Christmas. It is. I cannot understand why people vote I'll tell you, for Christmas. I'll tell you why. It's, it's this misconception... Uh, particularly for people who don't live in London, that London is full of all the rich people with huge houses it in Hampstead and uh, they all vote in Cotswolds. But mostly, yeah, yeah, yeah mo mostly, <laughs> most most of the people in London are struggling to get yeah. by. Yeah. It has a vast population of people who find it almost impossible to live in this really expensive city. Mm. And of course, they vote for the Labour guy. Yeah, yeah, of course they do. And also, the Labour machine in London has always been a lot better than the Tory one. Anyway. It's huge. Although, Cities. although actually, Sean Bailey came a lot closer to, to beating Khan than anybody knew. Uh, if only if if the, the, if the Tories had got behind him, yeah. Well, also, behind also him, I think happened. Sean, nice guy and all that, made a bit of a mistake recently. But um, what uh, you mean? He broke the rules. Well, he went yeah. to a party, didn't he? Uh, <laughs> oh, no. oh, he sounds like it's a nice guy. guy. Yeah. But, but uh, he, he, I think his mistake was he always approached that uh, electoral battle with a view to losing. Yeah. He never thought he stood a chance. No. And actually, I think on the final night when the count yeah. was going on, I think he must have realised... Well, he was ahead. I should have put mistake. some effort in. Well, he was ahead at one point. So he was yeah, actually ahead. He could have beaten him. Which brings us to another yeah. titan of the uh, political world, and it is, of course, the one and only former Secretary of State for Health, Mr Matt Hancock. Oh, I'm so <gasps> happy I mean, you did him. Oh, my God. We needed some light-hearted notes oh. to, to end the plank. This He's in some... love. He's I in mean, love. apparently, yeah, the reason... <laughs> that he did everything oh, that he did. Mm. <laughs> he was in love. I mean, the self-indulgence of this tweets that man. they're in love. And this was an interview. He <laughs> gave an interview, right? He gave a drink, an interview in a black turtleneck looking like the yeah. man from Milk Tray. He had tray. a glow-up, though. He did have a glow-up. <laughs> Someone mean, put a little bit of makeup on him. And he's actually talking... And then the really weird thing, I don't know if you, how close <laughs> you've watched it, but the really weird thing is when he goes at the end, because he can barely bring himself to say the words like he's a sort of cheeky schoolboy. Yeah. You know, and I'm sort of, you know... A bit like when Prince Charles said about Dana, well, like, yeah. of course I love her, yeah, well, whatever, whatever that, that means. <laughs> and he goes, um, and of course, you know, I am in love with Gina, which helps a bit. 
And then he does this with his eyebrows, you know, like, I'm a yeah. bit of a dirty bum. <laughs> yeah, but, you I'm know. naughty. Know what I mean? And yeah. we do naughty things behind yeah. closed yeah. doors. Gina, you know, who I always call Gina Lola <laughs> Bridgina. Gina, what a Gina she's like that, it's the Lola Sopranos. D'Angelo, is it? Yeah, it's Carla D'Angelo. It's like, Gina! What are you doing? Oh my But anyway, God. he then he goes on and on about how he doesn't really miss the job. Yeah. Right, as if we care. So he can't have really been into it. No. He really felt fast passionate. And uh, about it was it. only guidance that he broke, but he broke it because he was in love. I was still, I was and I mean, I we all remember the picture, right? Mm. With the hands on her backside. Yeah. Forget. I mean, that's he, not he what love looks it. like to a lot of people. No, that is hardcore lust. You can and he call did that say in his little things. love poetry speech, no, I'm just not in control. I wasn't in control of it, blah, 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 blah. Well, get it. Get some control, yeah, well, man. Yeah, you're not 15. And at least talk to your family about right. it before you but go off, you, think his wife you know, feels? doing well, dirty things he, behind closed doors He also doors talks about woman. the long version of the interview. He talks about knowing her most of his life. Yeah. So presumably before he met his wife, uh, how they were in student radio together. Yeah, and she was were. teaching him about how to be more emotionally intelligent. Huh? I didn't Listen. know it was called that. <laughs> I thought it was just one behind the bike yeah. shed. But there was no remorse about it being something wrong that he did. Now, I, people make mistakes all the time, this mm. kind of thing. If you say, listen, I did it the wrong way, and blah, fine. But the way he came across, it's like it was completely out of my control. <laughs> Forces were against me. I but wanted I mean, to do the right thing, but I just <laughs> had to do her. People have been, as it were, people have been poking fun at it, though, because somebody's put the interview to the, the, the tune of our tune. You know that Simon Bates thing that used to go on? Oh, yeah. Um, and, and people sort of showing pictures of other people throwing up. They're calling it vomit-inducing. The vomit thing about inducing. Matt Hancock is he seems to have no kind of self-critical faculty. No self-awareness at all. Because, first of all, we had the um, I've got a new job working for the UN story, which turned out that he didn't. <laughs> Because even the African country yeah. that he was supposed to be going to said, actually, we don't want you. No, mate. thanks. Not your you sort know, here, mate. You're, you're too, uh, <laughs> too much of a philanderer for us, to be honest. And then he had uh, that mission where he went uh, surfing to show off his sort of manliness. Oh, yeah, that's, manliness. that's a bit of a Putin sort of, thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, he was sort of walking me, around like, look at me, man. I'm a big, strong so, man. He paints surfing. this picture of yeah. everywhere he goes, people come running up to him to thank him yeah. for his oh, fabulous God. COVID. Everywhere I go, people yeah. say to me, thank you, man. And they kiss my hand. No, they really don't do that. Next time you see someone running towards you, I'd be be careful if I was you. <laughs> yes, so I, I, I wish I, I could nominate uh, Simon Bates for our tune, actually. That was uh, an interesting feature on Radio What do you mean, one of the well, worst things ever? Well, it's always full of 17-year-old girls that had seven kids. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then we fell in love. Yeah. And then, yeah. uh, Why is he one thing on led to another. What's he he's doing? being interviewed he for some kind of... redoing his image? Yeah. yeah, he's obviously been hiring some kind of PR company who has said, oh. here's what you do, you go and talk about yourself. That's a job and a half, it isn't really it? It really is awful. Blowing but up Matt keeps, Hancock. But he keeps trying to actually reinvent himself. Yeah. And each not... time he does it, it doesn't work. Do you know where the music from our tune comes from? No. It's uh, Zeffirelli's uh, Romeo and Juliet. Oh. oh, really? Starring Olivia like Hussey. Oh. As oh. Juliet. Yeah, because oh, she wouldn't be. Anything. She'd be Romeo today, wouldn't she? Oh, that's cool. another thing we should also, talk about. Also, somebody points casting. out. I mean, also, as somebody points out, we are in the midst of, as Kevin says, or the brink of World War Three. <laughs> Matt Hancock thinks it's a good idea to come out and say, "Well, of course, I was yeah. in love when that happened." Well, you know. no, it's not my fault. I was weak. I couldn't it's, help you know, it. You know, it's not great in love and war. No. Everyone's talking about war. Let's talk about my. Let's love. talk yeah. about my love. It's so narcissistic what he's done. That's what I yeah. felt about his performance. It's but all is... about him and him wanting to beg the public to forgive him and think he's beautiful and handsome and mm. manly. And... And, and, and he alone uh, nurtures the delusion that somehow or other his shattered political yes. career can be revived. And also he talks I've got about... bad news for you, Matt. <laughs> You're finished. And he talks about Gina as though there's nobody else in his world. I yeah. mean, she's got children, right? I think between them they've got six children. Yeah, proper patchwork. Which presumably they have to spend some oh, time bloody. looking they after. They are our people. They really are. I don't know what um, he's doing. Why does he think we want to hear from him? I know. Anyway, sure. That's the thing, You yeah. cheated on your wife. Go and be cheated humble about wife. it and yeah. try and fix things. Exactly. I mean, you know, sometimes people's marriages break up, but you don't have to go on and on about it and, and go yeah, how much in love you are with Gina. Make into a love story. Gina. It wasn't my fault. No. I was a weak yeah, nice, man. Yeah. Yeah. Sure by love. I was controlled by love. I mean, it really is ridiculous. Like, be a man about it. So, yeah, I messed up, but I can't help it. She was Hot, yeah, so. she was hot, yeah. yeah. I, I needed to have her. Yeah, I was in the elf's department. You should have seen what she <laughs> was know, wearing under overcome. that dress and all that. Yeah, all like all that, that, I can understand you know. a bit. But I was in the elf's department, we got overcome by lust. <laughs> 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 yeah. One thing led to another, yeah. and my career was over. That's it. <laughs> Who knew? I'm only de a de man de 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 <laughs> <laughs> And then one thing led to another. Blimey. I'll tell you what, this is going to be, it's going to be, could be between Vladimir Putin and uh, Matt Simon Hancock. Simon Bates, Bates, bigger in, Simon Bates in from nowhere. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. what a wally. With a bullet, as they used to say. <laughs> uh, right, we'll see who's going to be Plank of the Week coming up next.
Welcome back to Plank of the Week. So now's the time where we decide who is actually going to be the Plank of the Week. It's going to be hard, I think, to, pu to choose anyone other than Vladimir Putin, but I'll tell you what, why don't I, I choose yours from your first three nominations and see who we get? Right, I was James Corden, Anna Sauber Salbury, yes. and uh, who is my other one? Oh, Richard Moore. Richard Moore, Moore. Richard Moore's which I think good, is more it? like a plank stroke quite dangerous. Yes, I think Richard business. Moore has yeah, to be Richard the nominee for that Moore is one. less. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, let's have Kevin, less of Moore. Do you want to yeah. pick uh, <laughs> Belinda's? Uh, Yes. Oh, oh, sorry, oh, no, Belinda. No, oh, yeah, no well, you pick my, Kevin. Mine are um, uh, Gary Lineker for his uh, climate change concerns and then Newman University for a trigger warning the Bible <laughs> and finally our old friend Sadiq Khan for ruining London generally but especially today. Uh, it has to be the universities for me because Gary gets it a lot and he deserves it but the universities yeah, haven't been picked one, up yet. Yeah. Yeah. The universities <laughs> have been trigger triggered warning by on the, the Bible. Bible. Yeah, that is ridiculous, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right, so uh, the final three are... Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get Kevin to pick Vladimir Putin because I can't yeah, really... It has well, to you, you, you can't really you not... You don't have to go in that no, direction. Yeah. I, don't think, I don't think you can no. go... Oh. Any further than Vladimir Putin? I mean, the trouble is, and I don't like to do it this way, but I think Vladimir Putin has to win, really. Doesn't he yeah, does. no, he does. Yeah. I mean, and then so it's a question of who comes second: is it Richard Moore, or is it the Bible-fearing oh. Newman's University? Richard Moore for me. Richard Moore number uh, two. Uh, well, I'll go along with that. Although I do think wokery uh, is a bigger issue than. Uh, do you know when I was in, in, um, in charge of MI5. When I was in Connecticut, we went to this place called Mystic, which is mm. where they made Mystic Pizza. That oh yeah, from yeah, years yeah. With, ago, um, with the Brat Peter Pack, yeah. yeah. Um, and we passed a restaurant called Wokery. But it, <laughs> oh, God. So I took a picture of it and put it on Twitter, but it wasn't actually Wokery, it was Wokery. Yeah. Oh, was it, it was Wokery? A, it, was, it was a Chinese <laughs> restaurant called Wokery. Uh -huh. there was a, there was a apparently there's a chain of them. There was a restaurant on Charlotte Street for a long time. It was till about a year, a couple of years ago, called Salmonella's. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like, We're going there. Yeah. Was that where, what's her name used yeah. to go? Yeah. What was her name? Who? You know, the, the government minister. Oh, uh, uh, Edwina Curry. Edwina Curry. Yeah, you go to right. Salmonella's, you won't forget it for a long, long time. time. Yeah. Oh, my Another God. Another cheese omelette, please. Oh. No but thanks. can we agree that Putin is like an evil plank? We He's have an funny evil plank, plank, yes. But this is a guy with all plank. his pride, male pride, and, like, history is littered with men like this. Yes. And he is about to start something... Well, he has started... It's something that could destroy so much of mm. what we know in that area yes. of he Europe. Is a he's, an, he's a sinister and evil plank. He's he is. A syndrome. And he's I'm, a, I'm pleased you said that. He's Napoleon, he's Hitler, he's Putin. He's, he's all of all those the, things. All, all the same, same fabric. small nutters. But I saw a meme today that was, uh, it was Putin holding a pin to a, a balloon of the Ukraine and as he goes to burst it, he pops instead yeah. of Ukraine. Yeah. And so it could end up being he, that he, is, he actually self-destructs yeah. over this. This is, is literally for him a life or death Absolutely. struggle. If he loses, uh, he loses he's power done. in the Kremlin, he's finished. He's, he he's going to die. Yeah. He I think he knows that. I think he does know that. So, uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, for this week, you are the plank, albeit <laughs> an evil one. Uh, you are plank of the week, and let's hope you're not around too much longer uh, to see whether you make a second appearance. Uh, Belinda DeLucy, thank you very much, Dean. Kevin O'Sullivan, thank you. We'll see you next time.